Hey guys, Anthony here from Crazy Tech Lab and today I've got an awesome video for you because we are checking out the brand new ASUS X670e lineup and as you can see we've got a whole bunch of boards to get through here. Just a quick scoot around checking out some of the new features and we're going to start with obviously my favourite one, uh, obviously being a big small form factor fan. This is the Rock Strix X5, X, sorry, X670e my gaming Wi-Fi and uh, this it looks like an absolutely fantastic socket AM5 board. Uh, probably the most significant feature that a lot of you will be interested in being small form factor. If you look around here there are no audio ports so according to ASUS the audio is now off board and um, this is going to be uh, marking well pretty much a first for any Mini ITX model board. I, th I don't think any have actually moved the audio off the motherboard before and unfortunately I don't have anything else to kind of compare it against but the heat sink down here and just the general open area of the socket does seem to be a little bit bigger as a result um, obviously there's not as much uh, circuitry packed in down there with the audio circuitry having been removed but there is some significant cooling going on down there and as we'll see on some other boards in a second um, trying to think of some other things that we've got going on here if I just uh, lift the board up and flip it around We've got the uh, the new socket AM5 backplate and a new backplate for the motherboard as well to aid with cooling. I'm reliably told that the backplate is removable, so if you have a cooler that includes a custom backplate, you should be able to remove it, or at the very least, your cooler manufacturer will be able to supply an alternative backplate that will fit this motherboard. So extra gubbins that we've got down here there is a uh, I think that's a PCI Express switch down there to switch from PCIe 4.0 to 5.0 potentially useful for riser cables for example if you're going 4.0 and switch and have a uh, PCI Express 5.0 graphics card or something a bit further down the line obviously we've had those issues with PCIe 3 and PCIe 4 uh, but hopefully um, that's going to be sorting that problem out at the start also on here, it's a very similar design to the uh, Z690 motherboard for Intel. It just mounts on a couple of Type-C headers down there. And uh, this time sort of shifted over so you can hopefully make use of that in a mini ITX case. And uh, if we flip it around and have a look at the rear panel, um, as you can see, no audio ports. And uh, we've got two, uh, I think it's two Thunderbolt ports. I'm not entirely sure, I can't see on the, uh, the camera, but I don't, not entirely sure if they are actually Thunderbolt, uh, officially Thunderbolt, but they are probably, you know, just the really high speed Type C, which basically is Thunderbolt. Um, I will check on the specifications whether that's uh, sort of confirmed or not. Um, plenty of USB ports on this one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight USB ports, not including the Type C, so all Type A's. And um, maybe a bit of a shame not to see some faster LAN there. You've only got two and a half, uh, two and a half gigabit. Uh, but obviously you get the 802.11ax Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6E and uh, of course video output because AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series has have discrete, oh, sorry not discrete, integrated graphics so uh, you no longer need to have a discrete GPU to deal with them. So another motherboard that is super super interesting is the ROG Crosshair X670E Gene. It's the first Gene motherboard for AMD. And uh, again, this is socket AM5. Uh, absolute beast of a motherboard, this one. One of the craziest micro ATX boards I've seen, I think. And a uh, whole bunch of stuff going on here. We've got a massive Dimble 2 arrangement, which now includes like a uh, heat pipe going underneath as well, which is absolutely crazy. The full shebang of uh, overclocking testing tools, power and reset buttons and the well, flex key, but you can use that for a whole bunch of things. Probably a, lo a whole load of extreme overclocking stuff going on here as well. Loads of switches and buttons down here too. So I think if you're building a water cool PC or overclocking or something like that, then you're gonna have plenty of things to be playing with on this motherboard. Uh, no one on pricing on any of these yet though, but very, very interesting. And um, that's something that I just remembered about the ITX board as well, is that the audio being off board, um, now you get an external, um, an external amplifier or external DAC, and that is going to be very, very interesting. There are a few other gubbins on there as well, such as overclocking control and that kind of stuff. So this is the Crosshair X570E Gene. 
and uh, other motherboards, what else have we got here? We've got the ROG Strix X670E-E, that's kind of going to be a bit of a mouthful saying that, kind of EE, -E. I, I think they uh, could have maybe done a slightly different naming scheme there, but that's uh, the gaming Wi-Fi, so we've got crazy power circuitry on these boards. According to ASUS, they are all geared towards seriously high power delivery to deal with the higher frequencies and extra power draw that we're going to be seeing from AMD's Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. And given that the ROG Strix is traditionally kind of a mainstream ROG board, um, this thing looks like an absolute beast. If you look at the cooling for the uh, copious amounts of M.2 ports, um, loads and loads of fan headers, absolutely bristling with fan headers here. Um, You've got the quick release for the PCI Express button as well. Glad to see that's uh, found its way a bit further down the stack on being introduced on other motherboards. So elsewhere, as we can see, even the Tough Gaming is featuring the X70E chipset. So as Asus has basically said that they've gone high end with the X70E chipset as well. Obviously several different chipsets for socket AM5 and X670E is the flagship one so that's kind of um, interesting because I thought they might kind of split it 50-50 between the standard X670 and X670E but that's not the case here Asus has gone X670E with tough Strix and kind of the uh, the pure ROG uh, the pure Republic of Gamers boards as well so flipping around to the other side we've got the Pro Art X670E Creator Wi-Fi. So if you like your boards white and silver, this is the one to go for. And again, the Pro Art is X670E rather than X670, uh, the standard chipset. So stunning looking board. Again, some serious cooling on this board. And um, you've got 16 plus two power phases, even though it's not a Strix or uh, pure rock board as well. So see what other boards we got a uh, slightly cheaper looking pro art board as well and uh, that one is the pro art x670e creator wi-fi and uh, finally around here then we've got the rog crosshair x670e extreme uh, probably going to be an extremely expensive motherboard as well um, extended atx of course absolute beast with uh, 20 plus 2 teamed power phases with 110 amps per stage um, that's just going to be absolutely crazy um, I'd love to see what this thing has got in the box in terms of accessories as well because I reckon I reckon you get quite a bit um, massive heat sinks and uh, kind of loving the uh, the sideways design and of course we've got some interesting gubbins there as far as the power connectors go power and reset buttons or flex key of course which you can use for everything else and uh, looks like we've got some interesting stuff here with the um, the Dim.2 uh, add-ons here. So yeah, it's looking like some very interesting add-ons are going to be going into the accessory box. Flipping around the back, uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the Mini ITX board is the only board to have the audio off board. Uh, so here you've still got the standard audio jacks, and uh, you've got just an insane number of Type-C ports here. It's uh, just one of the craziest rear um, I.O. panels I think I've ever seen. So finally then, we're down to the X670E Hero. Uh, no pricing yet on any of these boards, of course, but I dare say they're gonna be pretty expensive. And finally, this is going to be probably the, uh, the mainstay of the lineup. The Hero has been pretty, pretty popular, um, being a uh, rock one of the cheaper rock boards, or if not the cheapest rock board, but we're still looking at something pretty substantial here. Doesn't look like there's any dim.2 arrangement, uh, but looking around the back, an equally insane IO panel, as you can see there, with four Type-C ports, uh, onboard audio, of course, and then we are all the way back to where we started with the ROG Strix X670EI gaming Wi-Fi. So, that's it from me. Quick scoot around the Acer stand here at Gamescom, and I will be back very soon with more news and reviews, including the reviews that you're all waiting for, which will be including these boards and AMD's new CPUs. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.